When using CS Pro, you will have noticed that lots of different files are produced. So in this session, we'll go through the files created for the data entry system and try and address the question, which files do I actually need? During the development of the data entry application, six different files are produced. We've already introduced some of these, but let's go through them all. The dictionary file, you will remember, has the extension .dcf. This is the file that contains the information about the fields or items in your system, including their names, labels, value sets, etc. The forms file with the extension .fmf contains descriptions of all the forms in your system. The data entry application itself is stored in the file with the .ent extension. This relatively short file contains links to all the other files in the system. Then there are three other files that have a further extension after the ENT. Firstly, there is the logic file with the extension .app. This contains any logic code that you've created in your application. The message file contains references to any customized messages you might have used. These can be used in the error message function in your logic code and you'll see how this might work during the practical. Finally, we have the CAPI questions file. This would contain the individual prompts used for computer assisted personal interviewing using something like a PDA running CS Pro Mobile. This particular version of CS Pro is no longer maintained, but the file is still created and may be used in later versions. There are a couple of files that are produced and that can be used for data entry. The first is the program information file. This file stores the application name, the data file name and any runtime parameters. The file is created automatically as soon as you move into data entry mode. A particular point to note here is that it includes the data file name. If you were to use this file for data entry, you'd not need to give the data file name. You would need to use a separate PFF file for each data file you were using. Our recommendation for this file is to basically ignore it. The file we would recommend using for data entry is the compiled application, which will be in the file with the extension .enc. This is a binary file, so don't try to list the contents of it. As we say, this file is the one we recommend for data entry. Because it's a compiled version of your data entry application, it will contain all the information about the dictionary, the forms, any logic checks, etc. If you have a team of data entry staff all working on separate PCs, this is the only file you need to transfer to these PCs, provided, of course, you have installed CS Pro itself. Now we come to the files that are created while you're actually entering the data. The most important one, of course, is the data file itself. Now, unlike other files created by CS Pro, the data file does not have a default extension. We would, however, recommend using one, and we recommend using .dat to indicate that this is a data file. Remember, you will need to type the extension yourself when asked for the data file name. Then we have the data file index with the extension IDX. This is a binary file and along with the compiled version of the application is one of the few binary files that you'll come across when working with CS Pro. The file contains an index of all the case IDs within your data file. The purpose of the file is to ensure that all IDs are unique. Then we have the listing file with the extension .lst. This will include information about the application and the data file. Note with these files, the extension generally comes after any extension you give to the data file. Thus, if your data file is mydata.dat, the listing file will be mydata.dat.lst. The listing file includes the start and end times for each session of data entry. It also includes the 
number and type of error messages received during the session. Next we have the operator statistic file with the uh, extension .log. This is a comma delimited text file and has a fixed format. Data from this file is used to display a summary report about your data entry operators. Each record or case represents one data entry session. So the data in this file includes the operator ID, the start and end times, the number of cases entered, the number of keystrokes and the number of errors. The notes file with the extension .not stores any notes that are added to particular fields or items during data entry. A note might be added for instance if there is something unclear on the questionnaire. Each note will be identified by the case ID and the field or item name. During data entry you can add notes by using Control N. Finally we have the data file status with the extension STS. The file includes information about partial saves including the IDs of any partially saved cases. Also includes the next field that's due to be entered. The file also includes information about verification such as the ID of the last case that was verified. So now it's your turn again. For this practical session we'd like you to use a text editor such as Notepad++ to view the contents of the text files. Don't try to view the contents of the binary files because they won't make any sense. If you don't have the editor Notepad++ we strongly recommend downloading it and installing it as it's a, a very handy text editor to have available. Practice using a control N to create notes during data entry. Work out what happens when you double click on the dictionary file or the forms file. How does this differ from double clicking on the .ent application? As usual there's a practical sheet for you to work through and when you've finished there will be a short quiz for you.